the djembe is a world music instrument that's used in churches, and you can find it at any church. Uh, this one is a 14 inch Remo, and uh, you can find them 10 inches, 12 inches, 14, those are pretty good sizes. And get to 16, it's pretty big. Anything smaller than uh, the 10 is gonna be pretty, pretty small to play. But with this drum, it's got great bass resonance, good middle tone, it's a little ringy, and then slap. So for each one of these tones, uh, there's a countertone. It's open bass, muted bass, open tone, muted tone, open slap, and that's made with the fingers, and the muted or closed slap. A typical djembe rhythm from West Africa would be one that's in 12-8, or you can think about it as 6-8, or just plain old compound meter. Triple, 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 triple. It's also a duple or a quadruple meter that you would play. That's a rhythm called funga. For worship, most of your meter is going to be 4 4. So make sure you can establish a good bass tone. You can add in an open tone with that. One, and four, one, Works with slow tempo and extremely fast tempo. It's important to keep the bass. Okay, now adding the other tones the open tone and the slap and the muted tone. It's good to use the pulsation system, whereas if I'm in 4 4, I'm thinking 16 notes mostly, sometimes eighth notes. So it gives you a good sense of pulse. One and two. Back beat on two and four. And you can mix up. A little funkier rhythm. Still keeping the 16 note pulse. And to spice it up a little bit, add the shaker. tube shaker. It's important how you hold the shaker. I'm going to place it in my hand like this. Thumb supporting it in the back. All fingers supporting it in the front. It's important how you move it. It should move on an even plane. So let it stay horizontal. Back and forth. So I like to think of my downbeats as being forward. One. And the upbeats so the and counts Behind, back. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three. Faster. One and two and three and four and three. Now as I get faster, I'm going to use my wrist more, just like you would in drumming. You start off with 
big muscles, and as you get faster, smaller muscles. So I'm just moving my wrist as I go. Out in, out in, out in. To get an accent, I will move my wrist quicker to get a downbeat accent, an upbeat accent, quicker back. So forward, back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, and two, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two. Or one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two. So notice the motions that are quicker forward and back to create accents. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. To create ghost notes while accenting, now the motion is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So the accents would be up and the ghost notes would be down. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. This is a metal shaker. To get a different sound, I can go to a plastic shaker to stop the sound. Four. Where all the notes are present, you hear the accents, you hear the non-accents, but none of the ghost notes. Right. For less sound, egg shaker. The pitch is higher, and you have less sound. And if you're playing, you need to be quieter than that. Just ball it up into your fist and take away some of the resonance. And here's an egg shaker that has a handle on it, so you can play it like a maraca or just a rattlesnake effect or a shindo. Or you can hold it in this fashion. The shaker. 